Oh my god, it's Thomas the Franchise. What is going down, y'all? Yo, what is going down, y'all? What is going down, y'all? What is going down, y'all? Welcome back to the... Thank you again for being a part of the most underrated sneaker channel on YouTube. The most underrated sneaker channel on YouTube. Your words, not mine. Your words, not mine. Probably every single song I've ever written in here. I mean, that's unbelievably shit. Yo, what is going down, y'all? Welcome back to the most underrated sneaker channel on YouTube. Your words, not mine. Actually, it's probably the most homeless sneaker channel on YouTube now because, as you guys saw, uh, my house caught on fire. So I no longer have a home currently. I'm staying at a hotel right now. I'll be here for about another week, and then we'll see where I'll be permanently, well, semi-permanently, I guess, while the house is renovated. It's gonna take like six months or so. So I'm probably not gonna be back in my house till after Christmas time, if I even go back in that house. Honestly, it's still way too early. I don't know the whole situation. I know a lot of you guys have a lot of questions and I'm gonna try to answer as many of them as I can But first I want to say thank you to everybody that reached out to me everybody that said hey How can I help? I'm really sorry all that stuff snapchat Twitter Instagram I just really want to thank you guys for that. This is kind of an update for you guys uh, The vlog camera was damaged the MacBook Pro was damaged. Well, they got wet. They're working periodically I mean certain stuff works certain stuff's not working that well And that's just what water does to things that causes corrosion They got wet inside my room when they were spraying down, but let me just start from the top. How did the fire start? The fire started from, they don't know for sure, but the investigator said that it's definitely like a cigarette, but he doesn't know if it was someone that was working over at the 7-Eleven they were doing construction on next to my house. I mean, it's like this far from my property line. So they built a wooden fence, which is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. If you're at 7-Eleven and you're in an area like that, my area is on the come up. If you're not familiar with Denver, it's kind of, it's being revamped. You know, they're kind of pushing out all the poverty. They're pushing out a lot of people that have been in that neighborhood for years because they're building nicer homes. They're renovating a lot of homes. They're building apartment buildings, all that stuff. But there's still is a ton of homeless people in that area. There's just a ton of trash in that area. Some mornings I walk outside and it smells like diapers and poverty. You know what I mean? Like the area is on the come up, but it's not fully there yet. So my first issue is with 7-Eleven. How are you going to build a wood fence? You're going to build just a little wooden fence between my property and your shitty gas station. That's going to be having people shooting up heroin behind the dumpster. It's going to have people in and out of there all the time. For one, it's just discourteous because of the noise. Like it's going to be noisy as shit right there. And you're going to have that right next to my house with no courtesy to put up like a nice brick fence or, you know, concrete 
concrete fence, something like that. They put up a whole like 10 foot tall concrete barrier for the dumpster. You know what I mean? They could have used that same model and built a fence right there and we probably wouldn't be having this problem. I probably wouldn't be talking to you about this right now. Instead, they built a wood fence and they put mulch and they put bushes right next to the fence. So of course, whether it's some construction worker or some homeless man, threw a cigarette butt over there by the mulch, by the fence, it was a 97 degree day very hot. The cigarette caught the bushes on fire, which then caught the fence on fire, which then caught the side of my house on fire. Now it's a brick house, but it was built in 1890. So it's like really old, old brick and materials. The flames climbed the side of the house and got to the attic. They started burning the roof. They started burning the attic right above my room. And that's what caused the fire. I had a ton of shoes stored up in that attic. I had a ton of shoe boxes, probably three quarters of my shoe boxes were stored in that attic, all gone, burnt toast. And then of course, everything that was in my room, which you saw all my clothes, they were laying under all that rubble on my bed. That used to be clothes. There was a bar hanging there with a bunch of clothes. Those were all smoked before any of you say it. Yes, I know my shoe collection was fire. I got it. Good one. No, but they were able to put the fire out pretty much in the attic. It didn't really spread down into my house, just a little bit into my room, not a ton, but what really ruined everything was all the water and all that bubble stuff you saw is like this bubble flame retardant that they spray in there so the fire doesn't reignite or whatever. I don't know, I'm not a fireman, but that's what they told me. That and the water just really wrecked everything. Not only do you have water leaking into my room, but you have dirty, burnt, ash water leaking into my room, leaking down all those cases inside those cases, staining up the shoes that were in those cases, filling them up with water. And then the stacks of shoes that I just had in shoe boxes, all gone. Those boxes had disintegrated. They're all just, there was a bunch of dead stock pairs of shoes that I had intended to sell. There was shoes that I had that weren't even my size that I had already sold to other people that I had to refund because I wasn't able to ship the shoes. It's just been a nightmare. It's not only sneakers, it's not only clothes, just personal items that got ruined, you know? like yearbooks, social security cards, passport, birth certificate, all of that stuff. My art, my songs, you know, songs I'd written, you saw those song lyrics that got just messed up. It all sucks, man. And there's a lot of stuff that's replaceable, but there's a lot of stuff that's not replaceable. So that's what really sucks. I really hate it for you guys. I hate it for the vlog because now I'm having to struggle through this vlog with some bootleg, trying to make this work with the equipment I got. And I'm used to putting out quality. You guys know how big I am on the quality. And I try to, I wanna make this channel as quality as I can for you guys. And and that really pisses me off. My drone, I'm not gonna have any drone footage for the foreseeable future. I feel like I was really catching a wave with the drone. I was using it in a way that no one else was really using it as far as sneaker vlogs go. That's all gone. It just sucks, man. I'm trying my hardest to stay positive. I've never been the guy to ask anybody for help. I don't like asking for help. I just like to do stuff on my own. And my friends know, unless you just show up, I probably will say, oh, I'm good, you know, and I'll just try to do it all myself because it's just the way I like to do things, which is not always the best way. And I really appreciate Josh reaching out to me. Actually, he didn't reach out. He just said, yo, I'm grabbing some gloves and I'm on the way down to help you out. You guys see Josh all the time in the vlogs. He's the dude I work with. We manage the T-Mobile store together that we're at. And I just love the shit out of that guy, man. He came down. He helped me dig. We were digging through stuff for hours. I mean, I don't even remember what time we started. Like maybe like eight. And we ended up getting all kinds of clothes and shoes and finding a bunch of stuff. And we went to this 24-hour laundry mat. If you follow me on Snapchat, you saw a bunch of this. I gotta show you guys how we're getting down out here. We have the 24-hour laundry mat in the hood. Look at this, man. This feels over here scrubbing shoes in the sink. Doug, tell me how that is the gentle wash. Look, I selected gentle wash. And this thing is whipping these things around in here, fool. We're at this laundromat cleaning shoes, cleaning clothes, trying to salvage anything we could, man. Cause I don't, I had what was on my back. Like I didn't have any clothes. I didn't have any of my stuff. Everything was gone. Most of the light color shirts and the light color clothes and stuff was ruined. It's stained with ash. There's no way you're going to get that out. A lot of the other stuff just smelled like smoke. Huge shout out to Josh for spending that time at the laundromat with me, man. We just went in cleaning this stuff. Vitzer, Dallas, everybody that's reached out. Vitzer came down here and kicked it for a couple days. That was cool. And he actually did set up a go me. I'll put that in the description. I was not really big on setting up a GoFundMe. I was not trying to ask you guys for money, especially until I knew what the insurance company was going to do or what they were going to pay. And as far as my personal items, they're really not paying for shit, which is pretty whack. They're going to try to give me retail value on a lot of these shoes. Some shoes they're saying, oh, the shoes are fine. We cleaned them. They took a ton of my shoes. All the shoes that were in those cases, all a bunch of the shoes that we found, they took and they have another company that goes through and they're experts at like doing cleaning, getting the smoke out of them. But what they don't understand is even if they're able to make the shoe super clean, doesn't smell like smoke anymore, I still don't have the box. I still can't resell that shoe for the value I could have before. And they don't, they're not in the sneaker game. They don't understand that. And so it was a big argument back and forth, but 
it's not worth arguing because I'm not gonna get my money. I'm not gonna get what I should get for the shoe. So I'm definitely losing thousands of dollars in shoes. Hopefully they're able to restore those pairs. If they're not, I'm gonna get retail on it. Like, come on, dude. I mean, I probably had nine, 10 pairs of Yeezys in that room. We all know those shoes are not worth retail. Multicolor Ultra Boost, Haven Ultra Boost, Color Ultra Boost, Jordan OVO 12s, Jordan Wing 12s. All these shoes are not worth the $200, 250, whatever retail price. So needless to say, Vitzer did set up that GoFundMe. Like I said, I'll link it in the description man if you guys feel like you want to give something go ahead i would never ask you to give something but i know there's a bunch of people that reached out that saying they want to give something saying they want to help out i will put that there if you guys feel inclined I mean, I can't even say thank you enough. If you don't have anything to give, but you still wanna help out, just use my Amazon links, man. Just share the channel. Just help me grow the channel. Just use my Amazon links when you're shopping on Amazon. You don't have to buy anything that I'm linking in there. All you have to do is click through that link and you can search and shop and buy whatever you want. And anytime you go through my links, they'll kick back a little bit of money to the channel. That always helps out as well. I'm trying to think if there's anything else before we get into these shoes. Oh, mailing address, man. I did set up a PO box. It's not even a PO box. It's at a UPS store, so it's a physical address. But I did finally set up a mailing address people have been asking me where can they mail stuff where can they mail stuff and I've been slacking so hard on that so now this allowed me to finally get something set up so I'll put that in the description as well if you guys feel like you want to mail something if you want to send something you're more than welcome to again I would never ask you guys to send me anything I would never ask you guys for any money or to donate anything that's just not my style but my friends and Everyone that wants to send stuff is really pushing for that. So I need to stop being a hard head and just let people do what they want to do. All right, with all that out of the way, man, let's take a look at some sneakers. <laughs> This pair here, I actually rescued. You saw that stack of boxes that was in my, cl um, no, in my bathroom. Like, I don't know what happened. Somehow there was a stack of boxes that was thrown in the bathroom. And those were actually on my bed. The morning of the fire, I woke up, got ready, got ready for work, and I got a few packages. I had them sitting on my bed. The pair we're about to take a look at was one of the pairs, the Red Aniki, the Bodega and uh, a Nike runner collaboration, the jean joint that was on there. Uh, a pair of triple blacks that I had gotten from the homie Thomas. Shout out to Thomas Yee, man. He came through and delivered a pair of triple blacks to me at my store. That was fire. But I had like a stack of shoes sitting on my bed and I think they just picked them up and chucked them across the room or into the bathroom or something because all those shoes were in the bathroom and the boxes were all wrecked and soaked. But inside, I went and grabbed each shoe out and the shoes were actually in good condition because they were far away from the wall and the, the running water and the fire. They were still wet and the boxes were still ruined, but the shoes are actually all in good condition. There's just a couple little like ash marks on the boost of the Aniki, uh, the end Bodega Aniki collab, but I, I should be able to just clean that off no problem problem but all those shoes were brand new and I just got them and I was so worried about them and I went through and grabbed all those shoes out and they don't even really smell like smoke there are a couple pairs of those I'm probably gonna sell because they weren't my size so if you guys are interested in buying them I'll kind of go over what I have to sell here at the end of this vlog or maybe the next vlog they don't have boxes so you're buying something you're buying a shoe without a box technically it is dead stock but yeah I don't even know you probably wouldn't call that dead stock I mean it's never been worn but it was thrown across the room and the box was water damaged so nonetheless man let's get into the pair of shoes we're gonna take a look at right now these are the mystery ink ultra boost bang there you go and actually this lighting in here is making them look really purple on camera anyway um, or I don't know maybe it's not gonna come out that way but to me they look purple as shit in the camera but they're definitely not they're like more of an old-school Broncos blue and then orange on the heel cup but uh yeah they're looking phoenix suns purple and orange they're really not i mean i guess in certain angles they kind of do look purple but in a regular just natural light or on feet they definitely look blue like i said these still have the tags on them they just have no box these are a size 12 they do run tight man they do run tight just like any new ultra boost you purchase they're running tight this was a euro pair i got these off a of netherlands site i do have a 12 and a half on the way those are coming from the homie in germany actually let me get his name Eric Newbert, that's the homie that sent him over. I'll put his Twitter here. So big shout out to you. I'm glad those didn't arrive yet because they probably would have got ruined. Those are still on the way. They should be here within the next couple days, I think. Like I said, they are coming from Germany. Before we look around the shoe in detail, let's go over the fit again really quick. The fit, this fits like an Ultra Boost 2.0. In my Ultra Boost 2.0s, I go up a half a size. I I mean, you can put, I can put this on and I could wear it around. I don't know what the people that are saying on the new Ultra Boost they buy them. Oh, they're true to size and they're great. Yeah, I get that they fit your foot and I get you put them on and you can walk down the hallway 
way and you're fine. I don't know. I really, I don't know what to say as far as the sizing, man. I'm going a half size up on these. I got a 12 and a half coming. These are a 12. They're just, if there was no other option for me, I could wear this without the insole and it'd be perfect. If I want to wear the insole in it, it's just, it fits, but my foot, it just kind of, my, my toe just pushes out a little. My toe just pushes up into the prime knit. It's not like it's uncomfortable. It's not like it wouldn't work. I just would prefer to have a 12 and a half. What I'm saying is this is not the same as the first Ultra Boost that dropped. You know, the Oreos, the Energy Reds, the regular core black, like all those ones fit baggy. Like you bought them true to size and you had some room. You might even be able to go a half down in those. These, there's no way I could ever go a half down in this. And a true to size is snug. This is not snug to the point like the black ones. This is not snug like those. This is not even like the multicolor. It's just a little bit more snug than traditional. I still recommend going a half size up on this. If you can only get your true to size, you'll be okay. It's not gonna be uncomfortable, but you just may notice like a little bit of this going on, you know? Like your, your toe just may, be crunched at the very end, and it just may be popping up out the prime knit like that. That's it. I'll do the on feet with these joints. I'll do, I'll do the on feet with these, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. You'll be able to see in the on feet, my toe is just kind of like poking up a little out of the prime knit. Like I said, it's not like they're uncomfortable. It's not like they're unwearable. It's just the fact that they're just, the shoe looks too small. I don't really know what else to say. I mean, I go back and forth with people on sizing all the time. Like if you have a tiny foot and you wear a nine and your nine is true to size, then it's true to size for you. I don't know. For me, this is like 2.0 sizing and I go half size up in 1.0 and 2.0. So I'm doing the same on these joints. I feel like it's probably similar to the multicolor. The triple black is on a, is tight on a different level for me. The multicolor is definitely like more narrow up here. Like this heel, like in my pair, this is so, so tight. This is not like that on this pair. This is a little bit looser than the multicolor but in the toe, it's pretty similar. As you guys know, I've been waiting for this shoe, man. I've been waiting to rock this shoe with my Von Miller jersey, which is now ruined, so I'm gonna have to go get another one of those. Because of this old school Broncos feel on this, I had to have this colorway. I love this colorway, I love this shoe. 3.0 prime knit pattern. It's that translucent style cage. They went back to that on this one, which I'm not a huge, huge fan of. I think the dark navy color and this blue actually look pretty cool. Doesn't bother me on this one as it does on some pairs. Traditional 3.0 laces. You got your uh, blue laces with kind of a black sprinkled in there. Adidas logo on the tongue. Blue with the orange sprinkled in. On the laces, traditional 3.0 laces. They have a pattern on them. It's more of like a blue lace with a black sprinkled in there. And then you got the fire orange lace tips. And someone asked if I'm gonna stop saying fire because my house caught on fire. No, I'm not. I'm still going to say fire all the time. Moving around to the back side, you got the bright orange heel cup with the silver Ultra Boost branding there. There we go. That's a more accurate representation of the color. So it's like a bright, bright orange. The orange in the prime knit is bright orange. And there's like an old school Broncos blue. My favorite part of the shoe, the fire orange insole. Pull that out for you. Super bright orange insole. Absolutely love that. Moving down to the midsole boost. And then you've got kind of a dark gray or a light, lighter black torsion. It's not really black, but it's kind of like that translucent black cage. It's like black, but it's not fully black. It's not like the sole black, you know what I mean? It's kind of like a grayish black, like a smoke. We'll call it smoke. We'll just keep with the fire theme today. We'll call this smoke. Smoke colored torsion. That's the only thing that I wish they would have changed on the shoe. I wish they would have made the torsion match the heel cup and just made it a bright orange. That would have set it off for me. As far as the outsole, they did do that on the bottom. You got the bright orange hit on the torsion there. Black continental sole, continental logo, Adidas logo. But yeah, if they would have had this torsion matching the inside, that would have just been, that would have really, really set the shoe off for me. But it doesn't ruin the shoe by any means. Still a must cop, still super, super sick pair. Something I did notice on my pair, man, is I had a heavy amount of like glue stains on my, let me see if I can turn that down. So I had like, I don't know, the boost is kind of ravaged right there and I have some glue stains there. And then it was really bad on this heel cup. Like there's just a ton of like extra, glue on the heel cup like it looks like this thing got sunburnt and it's peeling dog like it was out laying on the sun vegas and it got smoked and now it's just peeling like i don't know what that is but it's so like i said i am going to sell this pair i'm going to take this off real quick just so i can do the on feet for you guys and then i'll reattach it so if somebody wants to buy this pair hit me up again they don't have the box so if you're planning on trying to resell them they don't have the box if you need a size 12 and you want to wear them this is the pair for you i'm going to try to sell them for what i paid even though they don't have a box I mean, I think it's still below resale, but I did pay a little more because they came from the Netherlands. So I think I'll have to look at the receipt and see exactly what I paid. But if you're interested in buying these, hit me up. I'll look up what I paid. 
and I'll give you the price, and if you want them, cool. With everything that happened, I really can't afford to be losing any more money, so the shoes I'm selling, I'm trying to sell them for at least what I paid for the shoe, plus shipping, whatever it takes to not lose money, because I don't even know how I'm gonna afford to be buying new sneakers to keep the channel going as it is, so that's another stressful thing. But we'll just take it as it comes, and that's about it on these, man. That is the Adidas Ultra Boost Mystery Ink. I don't know why GOAT has these listed as the Mystic Ink. I've heard other people call them Mystic Ink, StockX has a mystery ink. I've seen everyone else mystery ink. I don't know why. Some people are saying mystic ink. I don't know if that's a typo or if they are mystery and mystic, but that is those. I just want to say thank you guys again for supporting me, man, for coming through the channel, for being positive, for hitting me with all the positive vibes on social media. I got back to as many people as I could, but I'm going to go back through and try to get back to everybody that reached out to me. So don't think I missed you or forgot about you or I'm Mr. Too Cool because I'm not. But yeah, man, you guys will be seeing a lot of this hotel the next few vlogs is my new setup for right now and then August 2nd we'll figure out where insurance is going to put me up in some kind of a furnished apartment or house or whatever until the house is re-renovated which is like six months. I'm just eager for this week to be over to see where I'm going to be permanently so I can start to try to put my life back together in a more of a permanent situation. That's really what I'm looking forward to. Thank you guys again man. If you have any more questions, anything I didn't cover, hit me on any social media. Leave them in the comments below. As always, I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. Mailing address, GoFundMe, all that stuff will be in the description. Thank you guys again for watching man thank you for supporting your boy and i will see you fools tomorrow And the biggest problems of my life, I'm so low I got a kid and a pregnant wife, I'm so broke Mama always told me this was trife, I should've known See from her tone, she was always right, I'm all alone Me and my man grew up together, since third grade Then we parted like the change of weather, went separate ways Man, I popped up to say whatever, one day I saw his mom, so he died from AIDS, what do I say? I went to school, but I dropped out, cause of beef I would've stayed, them guns would pop out, I'm dead me. Now it's hard to get my GD, jobs to scream They call me Doug, and it's hard to eat, I can't Speed. But baby girl, man, she's growing up, she's so tall Step by step, I see her rolling up, she's so calm But this life I feel is closing up, it's so wrong Soldiers dying, builders blowing up, we at war, but I know Started selling crack, that's play. He got deported, him and that shit was whack. It's so okay. I try to tell him as they all that he would say, Mind your business, cause I'm all cash, all day. My little brother, man, his soul's worth.